Hello everyone, my name is This Comic, and today we're going to be looking at all of the art books I own. You're going to be seeing right now some crazy footage of all my books stacked up here. This isn't even all that I have. I actually have like a bunch of how to draw books and stuff like that, but I tried to keep the how to draw books minimum. But I thought it would be fun today to show you some of the books that I tend to look at when I'm looking for some inspiration. So let's jump into that. I'm going to be breaking up these books into different categories. So like an art of section. So it's like art of specific movies and things like that. Then books that were published independently by the artists themselves. And then um, maybe a couple zines and some collections. And then a couple like little study books that I look at sometimes. So first up, probably the most fun ones are the art of movies. Uh, let's start with the Disney ones. <laughs> I have... Lots of the Disney ones. I want to collect as many of them as possible, but these are just the ones that I have right now. So I have The Art of Tangled. Tangled is one of my favorite movies and has some of my favorite people that worked on it, um, including Glenn Keane. Um, well, originally it started off with Glenn Keane, but then his daughter took over, Claire Keane. I actually have a book later on that we'll look at that has a bunch of work from her, but these are some wonderful images. Most of these books obviously are either storyboards or um, concept art for the characters and things like that. So that's pretty much what we'll be seeing for most of these. But we have the art of Tangled, then we have the art of Moana. Lots of really fun island sketches and concept art. Really, really beautiful illustrations. What I really like about these books is It'll tell you who the artist is that drew these concept images, and then it'll tell you actually what they did for them. So like a digital sculpt, um, graphite, things like that. I think that's super fun. Then we have the Frozen books, Frozen and Frozen 2. I think that <laughs> Frozen 2 was not the best, but um, the art book is super, super fun. And for me, what I like about these art books so much is that really this is like a celebration of the artists and you know, most of the work that they do for these companies or for like, you know, obviously for like Disney and stuff, they usually can't share it afterwards. But this is like a way to showcase a lot of the work that went into these and a lot of the stuff that the artists did. And I enjoy that very much. What I like about the Frozen 2 book is it's kind of dimensional. I think that they knew Frozen was so successful that they wanted to put like some extra into it. There are these fun pages here where like some of the gloss could be pulled up and you can see bits of extra detail in some of the stuff that they made for the movie. I thought that that was like a really fun addition to this book. All the artists work really hard on this movie regardless of what I think about it. <laughs> but the art book itself is just really beautiful. Then we have Zootopia, which is such a fun art book. I think the reason why I wanted to get this one, obviously not just because of all the concept art and stuff, but I really like the environments. I really liked seeing how they were going to incorporate all different kinds of animals to live in these environments. And so uh, it was really fun to see how they were going to accomplish that with this movie. And also I love all of this stuff, like all the little advertisements and, and things like that that they made. Um, lots of like parodies and not parodies, but like puns on animal things and stuff like that for all of their like boards and posters and super fun book. This next one is a little, a little old and, and dirty. Um, this was given to me actually by a friend. The, the cover is really what's dirty. The book itself is actually in, in pretty decent condition. It just has like, this is the art of Disney. Um, but a friend gave this to me. Thank you very much, Claire. The reason why I like this one is because it's basically got a lot of, it's got some concept art for like some of their shorts that they did, but then it's got like, you know, a lot of history that they talk about in it. And I'm a sucker for that kind of stuff. Talks about, you know, the early days of Disney. But then also as you get farther into it, there's a lot of like really, really cool large images and um, behind the scenes stuff for even things like some of their Disney shows. Like if you just saw a second ago, there's like a bit of Kim Possible in there, you know? So lots of, lots of cool stuff. This book is super heavy too. It's a big chunky one. So this one was a really interesting one. Um, usually my husband tries to surprise me with different gifts, things that maybe I would not have owned previously. So he tries to like find new stuff and I love that. So this is the art book for, <laughs> it's going to be kind of a bad word, Muttafuckas, <laughs> M-U-T-A-F-U-K-A-Z. It is a French-Japanese animated feature 
based on a comic called Meat City DMC. The movie itself is like got a lot of like gang and like weird sci-fi related things in it but the concept art for this is just so cool. There's so many like environment pieces, lots and lots of drawings of like the town and the city. It's just like such a cool urban feel and just something so different from anything I would have ever gotten. When he gave me this, he gave me the movie and then we watched it also. So it was really fun after watching the movie for the first time to flip through this book and see what kind of stuff that they, you know, worked on for this movie. There isn't a whole lot of written things. It's just a lot of visual stuff, but like, look at some of these scenes. Like, this is just so stinking cool. Look at that bus, man. The bus to bus. Really, really cool one. Then one of my absolute favorites, uh, Spider-Man Into the Spider-Verse, The Art of the Movie. I absolutely love this book, the cover for it, and without the sleeve, both super, super cool. Look at that green game. Just an incredible piece of movie history. The stuff that went into this, I haven't read everything in this book yet. I think I'm maybe only about halfway through. Even before I got this book, I just saw so much concept art and sketches and things for this movie on like Twitter and stuff. And I was like, I have to have this book. I love Spider-Man if you don't know, like he's my favorite, favorite superhero. I had to have this book. It's so good. It's so fun. There's just so many. This book is huge too. It's a big boy. Like compared to, compared to this one that we just looked at, like it's a big boy. But yeah, if you love Spider-Verse and you're into wanting to collect art books, this is definitely one to get. All right, next up, some of the other art of books that I have are based on games or shows. So I have the art of Steven Universe for the movie and then for the show. This one I think is only just the first couple seasons in it. So it's got a lot of like early concept art in it and it's a lot of discussions, but lots of really cool things. Like as you can see, pictures from conventions, but it's a really beautiful book and it doesn't have everything obviously for the whole entire series. But I mean, most of the stuff about Steven Universe, like in this art book, you know, you'd probably wanna know like how it all started. So like, this is a great one to have. And then obviously for the movie, it's got a lot of Spinel stuff, but I just love how big some of these are and I love that there's like lots of like you can see the marker bleed in this one just lots of really fun sketches you can tell that they were really putting their all into this just like really cool fun concepts lots of good storyboards you know your typical art of stuff then we have some game ones I don't have all the game ones I would ever want but some of the ones I do have I do have the art of Cuphead I've only played a little bit of Cuphead I did watch the entire show. This one has nothing to do with the show itself. I love the animation in that game, so having the art book was something that I really wanted. Uh, I've seen all the gameplay for it, but I've only played about half of it myself. But this is such a fun one. Super, super fun. You can see all their inspiration, like taking this and looking at like the Art of Disney one. Just lots of cool comparisons that you can make. Obviously, they're trying to incorporate that like really early, early animation style and it's just kind of a fun one to look at. Then I had to get my boy. I'm a big Kirby fan. I even got Kirby's just on my desk, just chilling out. Kirby was one that I definitely wanted to own at some point. I'd like to get like a Pokemon art book. This one isn't so much concept designs. This is really just more like official art for the series. There's a little bit of stuff in there, but a lot of times it's just a lot of like full official images. But Kirby is just so dang cute and there's just so much good art and it has to do with like pretty much every game that's been out up until obviously the publishing of this book in particular. But I think some of my favorite stuff in here is like all the like boss concept art because that's really where they can get detailed. Kirby's so simple, but a lot of uh, the monsters and the bosses and stuff are a lot more complicated and I like that a lot. It's cool to see how much detail you can get with simplicity, but that's what's like great about Kirby is you can go really simple or you can get really complex. Look at him, he's so cute! Look at that, they even got the sketches for the toys in there, that's so neat. If you're a Kirby fan, I mean, it, like, you can't go wrong with this one. Last in my art of is the Spirited Away book. I got this one on our trip to Japan. I really, really, really wanted the art of Spirited Away. Surprisingly, they had parts of it in English, which was really, really nice. This we bought in the Ghibli Museum when we were in Japan and gosh, look at that. Just such beautiful, like confident drawings and 
Just all the details in the bathhouse itself. Spirited Away is absolutely one of my favorite Ghibli movies. If I was going to own any Art Of book, it was definitely going to be this one. Alrighty, next up we have a bunch of self-published or self-made books. I'm going to start off with some of the zines that I own. You might have seen this one. I actually made a video about this one a couple of years ago. This is such a fun and fantastic zine. This one was put together by Caroline Director and consists of a bunch of little Pikachu doodles from the crew behind the Looney Tunes cartoon. And I will leave Caroline's information in the description. You really should follow her. She's very, very active on like Instagram and Twitter. And there are just some really incredible and hilarious drawings of Pikachu in this book. I absolutely love this. It's probably one of my favorite things that I've ever bought um, from an independent group of artists that like came together to make a bunch of stuff. Uh, this one, oh man, I absolutely love it. I'll also leave an iCard for the video if you want to see all of the art in this nightmare. I'm probably going to butcher his name, but this is Junkie by Guillaume Singelin. Um, I really loved his book PTSD, and so uh, when I saw that he had an art book, uh, we just had to have it because let me tell you, there's something that's... Um, I kind of I kinda get like Scott Pilgrim vibes a little bit from this, mostly just in like um, some of the graphic style, but I absolutely love his style of sketching and lining. And I also like how exaggerated his character designs are. The face shapes are really fun. You can tell that he's not afraid to experiment with different kinds of shapes for characters. But like, look at some of this stuff. Look at some of that. It's just so freaking cool. Like, being this, like, I don't know, confident is something that I wish I had. This is some of the art from that book PTSD I was talking about. And I just love how simplistic the actual design of the character is, but it's really the environments and the clothing that just add incredible detail. And then look at some of these. Just really, really beautiful stuff. Like I said, I will leave information for all the artists that I talk about if there are specific books for them in the description if I can. but. I love this book. It's definitely one of my favorites. Then we have Still Just Kidding by Cassandra Kalin. I love this book. Uh, I really enjoyed her comics online. And this one, I believe, was a Kickstarter backed book. It came with like stickers and like a little card game and things like that. I'm showing this one even though it's technically considered a comic book because there's big sections in it that talk about her as an artist, kind of like her journey and um, kind of her thoughts behind a lot of her work. It's just presented in this really like beautiful stylized way that I love. And then pretty much the rest of it after like the beginning part of it, it's just like a lot of the comics that you would see of hers online, which, you know, is obviously a wonderful treat to have. But I liked how the whole beginning part of it was just this like extra thing that showed some of her art and talked about her as an artist a little bit. So definitely a super fun one to own. And it comes in the super cute little sleeve that I love. Look at that. So nice, so pretty. Then we have the Nima, Nima, <laughs> the Nima book by Ross Tran. If you don't know, he's an artist here on YouTube. It's just a really, just beautifully presented book. I know he had a lot of problems and troubles getting this book published. It is a big feat, I'm sure, to get things published. I am number 1,446 of 2,600. Look at that. Um, but it comes with this beautiful little print. It came with some pins. And if you like video game art, I feel like this has like such a big feel to that. And I think he spent a lot of time putting this together and theming it to match this character and kind of her journey, which I thought was nice. It's nice to like, I, you know, I wasn't really familiar with like the themes of this one, but just visually it's, it's pretty tasty. I gotta say it's pretty, it's a very beautiful book. Then as one of my last of like a independent artist uh, printed book is the art of Haikala. I love this book. This is probably top three on my books that I own. Haikala is one of my favorite 
artists on the internet and I just really, really love her stuff. I love watching her working process on Instagram. She also posts some of her working progress on YouTube and I really, really, really wanted her art box, but every time that I've tried, it always sells out, rightfully so. But just her illustrations are so bright and beautiful and seeing her work with ink is just incredible. Seeing her use masking fluid and like paint on top of it and like just create these really beautiful layers of shadow with color, I just, I eat it up. Look at that. Just so pretty. So beautiful. Gorgeous book. Then we have the lovely ladies of animation, which has some incredible artists who've worked in the animation industry. And it talks about a lot of their thoughts behind art, like some of the things that they enjoy, some of the things that inspire them. And then of course showcases beautiful drawings and illustrations from all of them. It's really cool to see a whole book that just kind of like celebrates um, women artists in the industry. And it's got my favorite lady in here, Claire Keen. Like I said before, she worked on Tangled and her illustrations, like they're definitely reminiscent. I feel like, you know, she has a lot of her father in her. She's just got such a beautiful, I don't know, just like a really beautiful art style and way of approaching things. But there are gorgeous paintings and drawings throughout this entire book. Really just, oh, this book is so good. Then I'm going to talk about these two kind of quickly, but these are just kind of like collection art books um, created by fans. Like for example, this Undertale one, this one was gifted to my husband by some friends and it's just chock full of incredible, incredible artwork from fans. And it's got all of their credits at the bottom or like inside of all the images that were given to this book. And it's just a really cool, uh, like it's, it's big, it's a thick book just full of, you know, all the love for this game, which is super, super cool. There's cosplays and paintings, digital art, little comic bits, like just all kinds of like really fun, just a really fun, fun book. Then we have the Game Grumps Community Celebration. I believe that this was the first one that they made. I do like how they reference other people who have joined the show before, but uh, this one, Obviously you can tell by some of the people on the book that this was a couple of years ago. Um, the reason why I got this book is I obviously was a big Game Grumps fan, but also I submitted something in this book. So my artwork is in this one. Look at that. It has my Tumblr on it, if you'd, uh, if you'd believe that, but uh, uh, <laughs> obviously I don't really use my Tumblr anymore, but this was like a watercolor colored pencil painting that I did for them. But it's, it's really cool. It's got like tons of really fun, just crazy, hilarious art in there. Obviously references to a lot of stuff that was going on in the gameplays that they were doing at the time, but just like a fun, cute little scene. It's really well made and the colors are really bright and it's a good sturdy book. But yeah, these are fun ones. Then lastly, we're going to get to kind of the study material. I originally didn't want to put how to draw books in this list. Um, and the reason why is because we would be here forever because I have tons and tons and tons of how to draw books. But I'm just going to show you some of the ones that I take a look at from time to time. It's been a while since I've looked at some of these. Might as well then show off two other books that I got when I was in Japan. Uh, this one is kind of like just everyday slice of life kind of like environments, but um, it talks kind of about drawing landscapes and foliage also gets into watercolor too here's some like really beautiful watercolor illustrations it talks about like the colors that are used obviously it's in japanese so i can't read all of it just kind of you know looking at the layout you can understand it shows the reference image it shows kind of the sketch process it shows the colors that were used to kind of create the same depth that they have in those images and you know things like that and i and i like that i thought that, that was really nice from a person like me who likes to use watercolor myself. This was a good one. I like this one. Same thing for this one. Just really pretty, beautiful watercolor environments. Talks about the process. What I liked is this one also has English and Japanese in it. I was so impressed. I was like, oh my God, I can read. <laughs> but just some really beautiful, bright, vibrant. Um, talks about some layering and things like that. So I picked this one up too. Yeah. 
different seasons too. You know? Then this one is not quite, this one's kind of like a mixed bag of all of it. It talks about this person as an artist, talks about them as a parent being an artist, talks about their journey into becoming an artist, shows some of the work that they've made over time, some of their concept stuff. And then really a lot of this has to do with like how to be successful as an artist, how to manage social media and juggle all that stuff. Then it also talks about color theory and cohesion and lighting. And then it gets all the rest of this is really just like some really great tutorial stuff. Like look at that highlighted edges, lighting effects, visible stability, perspective depth, overlapping objects, composition, inking, choosing colors, line art, things like that. It's just like, look at that faces, nose, lips, heads, hands. And what I like is that they're not like too in depth. This is kind of almost like reminders of the basics if you're already into drawing. Um, but yeah, lots of really nice fun ones. I like this one. This one's cute. This almost feels like a notebook or a journal. Like it's even got this and it's got like the, the ribbon in it. It used to have like a, a little cover wrap around it, but that has since broken off because I read this one all the way through. This one's a really good one. I like this one a lot. This one is by Simone Grunewald. I hope I said that right, but this one's a good one. Then of course we have the Bible that everybody talks about, Richard Williams, the animator survival kit. I have slowly been going through this one too. I actually want to make a video about this in the future about me learning to animate because that is something I've been interested in. I don't think that animation is gonna be like my end all goal or anything like that, but I definitely, the reason why I want to learn to animate is because I think it'll help me make my actual drawings look more animated, like my still drawings and my comics and things like that. I want my drawings to feel like they have more movement to them and that they're actually kind of active. And I think that learning some stuff in animation can help me with that. So I got this book forever ago. And I, like I said, I was going through a little bit of it, but it is kind of intimidating and overwhelming if you've never done animation stuff like I haven't. I've done very, very limited things and they've only just been in my own monkey brain trying to figure stuff out myself. So um, this one is one that I definitely want to make a future video on, maybe going through parts of it and like trying to learn things like that. But yeah. And then we have, I'm going to just completely destroy Zhang Yong Sok. I hope I said that right. I probably destroyed that. I'm so sorry. But this is Stonehouse's Anatomy. This book is incredible. It's so amazing, this book. I have to be careful on what parts I open this book to because there's a lot of like how to draw things. But what's really cool about this book is it really just goes into every single part of the human body and how it moves, why it moves that way, all that stuff. Head, torso, here's the basics. Arm, hand, leg, foot, entire body. This artist is incredible already. And I believe he worked with a bunch of professionals like doctors and things like that to really get some accurate descriptions on how anatomy works and why the body works that way. Put some meat and bones into your artwork, I believe. There's kind of like some silly cute drawings and stuff to break things down even more. But then as you get into it, there's a lot of like breaking down the body and talking about muscles and tendons and you know, really goes into all of your bones and things like that. Look at the eye sockets. And as you get to these parts here, look at that. It literally talks about every single little muscle in your arms, your chest, your hands. So that way, when you're getting to these steps here and you're rendering all this stuff, you can really understand like every little muscle and why it's extruding or protruding or whatever word it is. Such an incredibly thorough book. I, I gotta say this is another one of those books that like feels really, really intimidating, but like in a learning good way, you know? Look at that. It's even got a whole section for drawing shoes. Now that you learn how to make feet, you gotta put shoes on them. You can't have bare feet. It's the internet we're talking about. So look at that. It's just got like really big, beautiful, just detailed illustrations on like just every part of the body. It's just, it's so, it's so good. This book though is really freaking expensive. <laughs> so um, it's uh, one of those ones where if you are really into anatomy and you want to have like hyper-realistic stuff, I mean, maybe not even just hyper-realistic stuff, but if you want to like, I don't know, just like you love anatomy and you want to be the guy who 
draws all the bones and this is the bone book you get the bone book okay you buy the bone book you want bone you want bones you get the bone book okay that's you know that's all i gotta say about that and with that, I hope you enjoyed this video of me taking a look at all the art books that I own. There are so many great visual resources online that people use to find inspiration or to learn from, but there's just something I love about picking up a book chock full of all the things that inspire artists to create. As always, videos like this are possible because of my amazing banana members and people like you who like, comment on, and share my videos. I appreciate you all stopping by, and I hope that we can draw together again soon. Bye, guys.